feel like your character's eye is flat, no emotion, no dynamic? Well, I got just the solution for you. Sort of. That being said, how do you have a more dynamic eye? The one that can show so much soul, so much emotion, so realistic yet not at the same time. Like really? How? Well, let's start with the most basics of basics, the fundamentals. Now, before we get into the anatomy and detail of the eye, it's important to understand perspective and overall shape of the eye first. Eye mainly consists of three main parts, eyelid, eyeball, and lower eyelids. Well, there's more to point out, but let's make it nice and simple. With this in mind, we know that the eyelid and lower eyelid is wrapped around the eye. So in different perspective, the eye would take a different shape. For example, if the camera is from the top of the subject, the eye will have this curved downward shape. Same can be applied to perspective from below. But the difference will be it will be curved upward this time. It's easier to understand this concept by just studying the perspective of a ball. Based on that, the side of the eye will be seen shorter than the eye from the front. It usually will be half of the width of the eye seen from the front. And from the side, the upper eyelid and lower eyelid will place more forward than the eye. Let's take them apart to study what you can do with that information. First, the eyelid. Eyelid is usually the main factors of determining and showing a type of personality at first glance. Not only that, with just the eyelid, we can make many combinations of eye type by just playing around the different types of eyelid to personalize characteristics. Same can be said with lower eyelid as well. Next is eyeball. Now, the eyeball consists of iris, pupil, and the syrah. Though that may be simple, this is often where people get things wrong. For example, the shape of the eyeball. Our eye is not completely a circular shape, as eye has a protective layer called cornea, which will result in making the eye look like it's protruding outward. Hence, when artists draw eye from sideways, if you observe the eye closely, you would notice that the eye is not completely a circular shape, as that is just a cornea protruding out. Secondly, the inner structure of the pupil. This is probably the one that I see people look past the most. The structure of pupil is actually this circular cone-shaped thingy, where the pupil is sunken into the eye. That's right, the pupil from the outside looks like it's protruding outward, while the opposite can be said to the inside of the eye. Third of all, the colors of the eye. The syrah of the eye is not white, it's actually gray, with sometimes accompanied with pinkish hue. Well, for the iris, I don't want to say too much about it. As an anime style, there's plenty of way to draw it. But let's explain some things about the real eye instead. Iris usually would consist of more than one color. Of course, except you have dark brown eye, then uh, you're fine. But usually, for a light-colored eye, there's going to be a combination of green, brown, or even yellowish brown. In most cases, the lighter part of the eye will be close to the pupil, while the dark color of the eye will be at the edge of the iris. Now, the lower eyelid. Just like the upper eyelid, there's different ways to draw it to show different personality. For example, eye bags, wrinkle, waterline, or the... 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 Lacrimal caruncle. Uh... Understanding and cooperating these features can truly bring out a lot of depth to the eye. Of course, people often get rid of it or minimize it to avoid making their stylistic eye look too realistic. What I like to do is to take these information and try to find a middle ground to have a little bit of both sides. Now that being said, let's talk about one of my favorite features of the eye, the eyelashes. The shape of the eyelashes doesn't go straight up, it's in fact a curved shape. Hence, most often when looking at the front of the face, we can hardly see it. That being said, there's exception like having a very long and curved eyelashes. While the lower eyelashes would often just go straight down, which would be easier to see in any angle. Usually for eyelashes, the top eyelid would have a thicker and longer eyelashes compared to the lower eyelid. There's different ways to draw eyelashes. Some might draw it like it's a grass field, some might draw it super stylized and simple, and some might be a bit of both. What I like to do for my eyelashes is to draw it in multiple triangles instead of drawing it like a grass field. It helps me to have better control and allow me to have a simple time by stylizing it. Now, let's talk about lighting for the eye. 
based on where the light source is from, let's say from the top, the upper eyelid and eyelashes will cast a shadow down to the eye. The cone-shaped pupil will be affected by the lighting as well. Top of the iris will be darker as the upper cone shape will block the light and shine down to the lower iris instead, causing it to look brighter, while having sharp highlight on top of the eye as the moisture of the eye is reflecting the light source. This is the same to any direction of lighting. Bonus! Makeup After studying the arts of makeup, I have learned a great deal about various eye features affecting our overall appearance. For example, most Asian beauty standards prioritize having the singular perfect double eyelid as it gives a big eye effect as well as a youthful appearance. There's also blush, which can affect the eye's aura. Usually, when someone wants to portray a cute personality, the blush often will be applied right below the eye. Well, for a mature look, the blush would be closer to the wing of the eye. There's also using an eyeliner to make an illusion of having a deeper depth to the eye structure as well as stretching the eye with, or my personal favorite, creating a fake eye pocket thingy which can make the eye look bigger. This actually appears when we smile, which is why having this fake one makes us look great all the time. And just like that, we are done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I understand that I haven't been very active in video form lately, but I'm back. The video is a bit different from my previous video, which I hope you don't mind. And from this, I would also like to inform you that I'm currently looking for an editor. Feel free to email me if you think you or someone you might know is fit for this role. Of course, any question regarding this matter can be asked through DMs or email. That being said, you can see my artwork on Instagram, Twitter, which is now X, TikTok, and Thread. Link is all in the description. Comment down below what you would like to see next, and maybe share this video with people you think might benefit from it. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.